It's week five of the Laundry Basket Quilts Summer Mystery Quilt, and I think this week is gonna go quick. We have a much more manageable amount of blocks to work on, just eight, and I think they're, it, they're gonna work up really quick. I've been trying to figure out what fabrics to use, and I swear it shouldn't be this hard. I just need one dark, one light, and one medium, but I can't decide. I'm in one of those phases where like everything I have here, I'm just sick of. <laughs> Or I'm like, for this one, I'm like, what was I thinking? Why did I get this? Um, <laughs> this one too. So I'm just agonizing over this way more than I need to. And I'm not going to make you sit through this. So I'll see you again when I have a better idea what I want to do. So, of course, I have my background fabric. That wasn't a hard decision at all, because I'm just going to use this up till I don't have anything left. And I've narrowed down my light fabric and my medium fabric. And just as a reminder, this is the shiny one that I'm gonna use the wrong side of the fabric. And I also double checked that there's gonna be enough contrast between my background and this light fabric. Okay, I do have one last choice to make for my dark. I'm leaning towards these two, but I can't decide. I like that this one is a little darker and um, this color is nice with the jellyfish, so for a better idea of how they'd work together. There we go. So this one has a little more contrast between the dark and the medium, and this one has a little less contrast. But I like the idea of the turtles and the jellyfish together, and I'm, so, I'm trying so hard for a good excuse to use this turtle fabric. And since the dark strip in this block is going to finish twice as big as the other strips, it could be a good opportunity to use these turtles. Turtles. No turtles. Turtles. No turtles. I think this looks better, but I really want to use these turtles. So I am going to relinquish control of this decision and just roll a die if it lands on even. I'll go turtles. If it lands on odd, I'll go with this darker one. Okay, here we go. I managed to track down a die. Let's see what we get. Two. Turtles it is. I almost forgot. Before I move on, I wanted to show you the blocks that I made for my mom's quilt for last week. So this is 4B, 4A, and 4C uh, and D. I have to say, I'm really loving, I'm not normally a pink person, but I'm really loving um, the pinks in my mom's quilt. They're just so cheerful. So it's really nice to do a cool quilt in my favorite colors and then move on to um, some colors that I wouldn't normally choose for myself that are just so happy. Here is the week five strip set layout. We've got medium, light, dark, light, medium. And while you're cutting, Keep super close eye on your measurements because each of these um, fabrics are a different width. And I learned this the hard way. <laughs> I was not paying attention. I cut it too short. And then after that, I cut too many. So I wasted a bit of this fabric. But to add salt to that wound, I was a quarter inch off of my background fabric. I wasted so much fabric. Oh gosh, I hate doing that. Um, it was a quarter inch off. Hopefully I'll be able to use that somewhere else in the quilt. But I had to recut and um, I got my pieces, but that was so frustrating. I'm going to be making two half width of fabric panels. So that means I have four half width of fabric strips for this one, four for this one, and two for this one. I'm going to go ahead and take all of this to my machine sew it up like we have been sewing our strip sets, and I'll see you in a little bit. I've been finger pressing towards the dark as I go, but now I'm going to give my strip sets just a more formal press with my iron. And since I've already been pressing, I don't have to do a bunch of maneuvering as I go. I can just uh, flatten it out, straighten it out, and just go. You gotta love best press in a wool mat. But what I really want you to see is the back of this panel. <laughs> I had a little panic the first time I saw this because I forgot I was doing it on purpose. <laughs> so yeah, 
really super fancy shiny back that no one is ever going to see. Except for us. Okay, I'm going to admit it. It's time to cut and I'm nervous. <laughs> My quilter's ego can't take another mistake today. So I am going to pay super, super close attention to what I'm doing here. Measure twice, cut once, measure a dozen times, cut once. Okay, here we go. I was double checking the Laundry Basket Quilts blog to make sure that I'm cutting these squares um, to the right measurements. And I think I might have found a typo. I'm, in fact, I'm pretty sure that it is a typo. It said to cut eight squares from our two panels, which isn't achievable at the size of the squares. So um, I think what they meant was four squares, which is achievable. So that's what I'm going to cut. And if I'm wrong, you have the benefit of watching another one of my mistakes. There's just one more bit of cutting we need to do, and we're going to do it for these squares and the background squares. I'm going to align my ruler from corner to corner and then cut. I'm going to turn it actually to make it more comfortable. Then you want to pick up the ruler without uh, dislodging your fabric, which I have done just a little bit. And then I'm going to cut from the other two corners, corner to corner, without shifting my fabric, hopefully. Oh, that's an awkward angle. And I didn't get it. Let's try that again. Dang. There we go. Okay. Like so. Okay, let's say you did bump your fabric and you can't get them to line up correctly or it's too hard to put your ruler down and keep them together. What you can do is use the 45 degree line on your ruler and line that up with this side. Here's your um, right angle. So you'll line up the 45 degree line right there and you'll match up your corner and then you just cut it down the center like that. Before I put these blocks together, I just want to take a moment to appreciate how cool these little uh, wedges are. So if you put four of these together, you get a little log cabin-y looking thing. Very cute. And if you put four of these together, you get a cute little plus sign sort of thing going on. Very cool. So that's another cool use for these little wedges. I especially like this one. The trickiest part of this block is making sure that you sew on the right side, on the correct side. You don't want to sew up here, it's going to throw it off. If you sew here, you're going to end up like this. So you always want to keep a very close eye on your sewing edge, like this. And I try to orient them all the same so they don't get all uh, confused and, and chaotic. <laughs> I also always like to start with my right angle corner because if I start with these points here, it will get sucked into my machine. It's going to be a mess. I have to do a ton of seam ripping. It's just very annoying. Another way to manage this step is to think about them like they are half square triangles. Like so, you can set them up uh, assembly line and flip, 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 and they're all automatically the right orientation. All of my triangles are pressed to the light, and now it's time to move on to the next step. So normally, I would just match them up, flip one over, nest the seam, and then sew from point to point. But I was thinking about what Editha said in her video. She says she nests the seam, but then she'll sew from the center to the end, flip it, and then sew from the center to the other end. And at first I was thinking, why would you do that? Because you can get the same results if you just nest and sew end to end. But if you sew from the center to the end, that means you never have to start with this pointy end um, in your machine. And it has no chance at all to get sucked in and make your life absolutely miserable. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try that out. I'm going to do center to end, flip center to end, but you know, chain stitch it 
and I think that might work out really well. I'm actually looking forward to trying this out. I feel like I've done this before, but I can't remember why I did it before and why I haven't done it since. I actually ended up really liking Aditya's technique of sewing from the center to that pointy end because I matched up all of these points really well and I didn't get anything sucked up into my machine. I didn't have to take out my seam ripper at all, which was really nice. And a quick note about pressing. I spun my seam. I opened it and I spun my seam and I ended up getting that cute little four patch, which I just adore. I don't know why. Um, nobody's ever going to see it. Speaking of things nobody's ever going to see, look at that shiny back. And now my mom's blocks. I actually finished them. Yay me. <laughs> Pat on the back. They came out so crisp and cheerful. I used Aditya's method again of sewing from the center to the points. It worked great. Highly recommend that option. I think people with fancier sewing machines maybe don't have the same problem with getting the points sucked into the machine. Um, I don't know. I've never used a fancy sewing machine, so let me know in the comments below if you have a super nice uh, machine, if that happens to you. I'm going to be brutally honest for a second. They're not the most interesting blocks. They weren't really fun to make. They weren't hard to make, but they just sort of weren't interesting. But when I added them to my quilt mock-up, wow, they make a big difference. They add a lot of character and interest. So I can totally see why they are included in our quilt top. It's probably just not a block that I'm going to go back to. 